Houdini 20.5 has been released and one of the new features for Karma XPU is adaptive sampling. So let's take a look at how it works. So this project file I'll give for free on my Patreon. If you want to grab it, you can do so on there. Just so you can render this out yourself or you can just follow along either way. Uh, but this may be a little bit hard to see on YouTube. So I just want to make sure that everyone can see uh, kind of what's going on here. So I'm going to drop down a recipe here. And if you don't know how recipes work, they're new to Houdini 20.5. And I have a video that goes over how they how they work. So it just uh, creates a basic scene for me. So I'm going to jump into our SOP create here. I'm going to drop down a rubber toy. I'm going to disable that shader and drop down a match size and set this to min. And then I'll drop down a grid as well. Then I'm going to drop down a name node so we can assign different materials to each of these objects. Call this one toy. If you don't know the basics of Solaris, I have a tutorial series on the basics. So go through that if you are interested in getting up to speed with Solaris. But drop down a merge here and wire these both in to this. And I can jump back up now. And let's go ahead and just actually, let's come back to our grid and let's set this to 100 by 100 just to make sure it's super, super large. Let's look through our camera. And then in our material library, I'm gonna make a copy of this material. We'll call this one ground. We'll call this first one toy. And I'm gonna come into this ground and I'm going to just make this a little bit of a darker gray. And then I'll make our toy. I'm gonna come to this and enable our transmission and just crank this up on our transmission. That way we kind of see what's going on with our object and we'll, we'll set this to a blue. Transmission is a lot harder to render than just a, a diffuse material. So it should be a good example of what this uh, will do for us. So I can come in here, I'm gonna come to our render settings here and I'm gonna come to this image output and I'm gonna scroll down and come to extra render bars. I'm going to add an extra render bar in here. So I'm gonna select this and go all the way to the very bottom, which is off screen for you guys, but it's called Oracle Variance, and that's the render bar that I would like to enable. And that's going to allow us to look at our, our basically how our pixels are, or how our rays are being fired into our scene. So let's come to our advanced tab and by default, this is somewhat set up, but it is set to a minimum of samples of negative one, which kind of disables it. So uh, if you want to adjust that, uh, you will need to, or if you wanna have adaptive sampling, you really kind of need to change that. But we're gonna look at this here in just a second. Let's go ahead and start to render this with uh, Karma XPU. Let's scroll in here and I actually forgot to assign our materials. So let's come back and do that with our material linker. So our ground, let's drag this over here. Let's drag our ground in and then our toy, we shall do the same. And now we are ready to render with XPU. Let's uh, just uncheck that as well. And let's come over here and we'll just check this little icon right here, which enables our snapshot view so we can take some snapshots. So this is actually already finished rendering, but I'm gonna crank this up to, let's do 1024 on our samples. And we're gonna let this converge while we're doing that. I'm gonna come up here and click this little plus icon, come to new pane tab type, come to Solaris, and we'll do render gallery. And we'll come back to our scene view and that just started uh, restarted the render. So we'll let this converge so we can take a snapshot of this, just so we have a base of what we can go off of. So I'll give it just a moment here and we can take a snapshot now. So let's come over to our render gallery and I'm just going to actually twirl that down and let's actually call this uh, like disabled. And we can come into our Oracle variance in here and you can see that we don't really have anything showing up. I can right click on here and come to color correction and I can click this setting and we're going to see kind of how our pixels are being fired. So there's really not much uh, of a difference between uh, the background and your object in here. Whereas once we turn this up a little bit, you can see a little bit more of a difference. So let's come back to our scene view here. 
And I'm gonna set the minimum sample. So this is gonna drive kind of how our object is going to render. So let's set this to just like 12 to start off with. And I'm gonna set the pixel variance threshold. This is gonna control when the render is told to stop rendering. So you can see it's rendering, it's still, still rendering, uh, starting to go faster and faster as time goes on. If I set this down to 0.1, it's going to render very quickly. It's done in just a second. So I'm gonna take a snapshot of that. Let's call this, uh, we'll call this 0.1. And then let's set this back to 0.01. And we'll give this a second to render as it's going to take a little bit longer because it's going to look at the minimum samples and then it's gonna take this threshold into account. And it's gonna take how far off of the pixel threshold this is uh, to determine when it's going to stop rendering. So let's take a snapshot of that. Let's set this to 0 0.01 and come back into our render gallery here. And you can see with a value of 0 0.1, everything is kind of all of this kind of whitish color. And that's not necessarily, well, actually, once we refit this, um, you see that, that we have the background uh, that's kind of darker than, than this middle. So the middle is getting more, more rays fired at it. And if I come to this 0 0.01, we have kind of a, a similar situation. So where the, the white, the, the more white the object, the more, uh, more rays that are gonna be fired at that. Let's go ahead and just turn on our render stats here and we can see kind of what we're going to get with this. So if I, well, this one actually came at a, a different, resolution so um, it's gonna be a little, little weird to look at but the resolution there shows the same so it took 12 seconds to render that with the with it disabled with the variance disabled with the variance set to 0 0.1 with a minimum of 12 samples it's going to render basically immediately and then with that 0 0.01 threshold, it's going to render in 16 seconds. So let's look at the color channel now and we can see the difference between these two, especially when I zoom in. This is very, very noisy, whereas this is much more cleaned up, but we still have some noise in here. We still have some noise in the floor. So let's go ahead and so kind of how we can start to, to get rid of some of that. So let's take our minimum samples here and I'm going to crank this up to maybe like, uh, 512 and then it's going to render everything to this minimum samples of 512 and then anything that needs more based off of this variance threshold it's going to give more up to the maximum path trace samples of 1024 so as it goes further and further in here you see it starts to pick up and it really picks up there and now we are done so let's take a snapshot of that and we'll call this one 512.01 and let's just set this to uniform just so that we have something else to go off of. So this is gonna send 1024 samples to everything in your image, every pixel in your image. Um, so it's gonna take a little bit longer to render out here because everything's getting the same amount of samples versus we have adaptive sampling enabled with this other one. So it should be a little bit quicker. And we'll take a look at kind of what that difference is here once this finishes. It's almost done and then we can take a snapshot of it once it is. So there's our snapshot and we'll just call this one uniform and then let's jump over to our render gallery and we can see what this gives us. So with our, let's actually look at our uniform first. So it took 29 seconds and we have a, this level of noise, it's kind of hard to probably see, uh, but we definitely have some noise in here. The ground is, is fully cleared up. Um, there's a little bit of noise, uh, but not a whole lot here real, real close to um, our rubber toy, but in our rubber toy, there's a lot more noise going on. And with our adaptive sampling enabled, it renders in nine seconds faster, and we get still the, the ground is, is pretty clear. There's maybe a little bit of noise in there. Um, and then there's basically the same amount of noise between the two in our actual rubber toy. There's maybe a little bit more noise here down in our, in our like ambient occluded areas, um, but not a whole lot more. So let's take a, a little shot at clearing that up just a little bit more. Let's come to our scene view again. Let's come back to our variance. 
And then let's crank this up to 10, 24 for the minimum samples. And then we can crank this up to like 2048 or 4096 if we wanted to. Um, like I said, this is gonna be the upper threshold for where your your samples will be allowed to go to. So at a maximum, they're gonna be able to go up to this 2048. And at a minimum, they're going to get this 1024. So it is gonna take a little bit longer to, to render since we're rendering everything with more pixels. Uh, or more samples, I mean, but once it gets about halfway, uh, maybe like 60% of the way, you're going to see that this this rendering percentage is going to start to really climb up. And there we go. It's starting to really take off now. And this is really where we start to see our our time saved. So let's take a screen or a snapshot of that. And we'll call this 1024 with a variance of 0 0.01. And we can jump back over to our render gallery. Take a look at this. So this took 37 seconds to render. And we get all of this noise is basically cleared up now. Uh, it's the same same that we got with this uh, this uniform sampling in here, but our our rubber toy is a little bit more cleared up. Um, it's maybe a little bit hard to see on my screen. It's a little bit more clear, but the rubber toy is a little bit more cleared up, and it only took another eight seconds versus if we were to set this to uh, full 2048 samples, it's probably going to take almost double the time of our of our uniform um, with 1024 samples. So just for a just for a testing purposes, let's set this variance threshold to like 0.01. And it's going to take a little bit longer to to render here because it's going to say that everything needs to be uh, a little bit further apart. Or it, it's going to it's going to try to send more samples to to more things. I, I'm not sure how well to or how to explain that well, um, but it's going to try to send more samples because this threshold is is lower. Uh, but it shouldn't be too too much. We'll see what the difference is in render times once this has kind of started to finish. And I, I urge you to uh, download the scene or rebuild it yourself or whatever scene that you have. Maybe you have one uh, you have one already set up and play around with these settings and see what the difference is in render time. So we should start to see this start to pick up here. Uh, it's taking a little bit longer to hit that, that threshold. Um, so it's going to send more and more rays versus uh, when we have that set to 0 0.01. So it's having a harder time to, to reach that. So it's gonna take a little bit longer and we may not even really see a difference uh, versus if we were to set this to like a uniform. So it never, looks like it's never really gonna take off. There it's starting to take off. So it got to pretty much the full convergence before it really took off. So again, we'll set this to 1024 with 0 0.001 on our samples. And then we can jump over here Again, that took a minute and 16 seconds, and we have basically the same image that we had uh, with this one. So really, really not worth it um, to to do that with uh, that lower with that lower threshold. Uh, maybe crank more samples, um, and then still use the take advantage of that adaptive sampling to try to get rid of some of this noise. But anyways, that is kind of a, an in, in depth lookish at what. Um, what this does. So you set your minimum samples and then it's going to send that to every pixel. And then from there, it's going to determine based on your variance threshold, um, which pixels are going to need more, more samples. And if you set this to a higher number, it's going to render faster. And if you set it to a lower number, it's going to try to send more, more samples to every pixel. So um, point one, point zero 0.01, I think is a good, a good um, default value for that uh, and then just play around with your, your minimum samples. I wouldn't really jump too much lower than that 0 0.01 because uh, it's just going to exponentially increase your your render times as we saw for not a, a whole lot of game but um, I guess that's probably scene dependent as well. So play around with it and see what is going to give you the best results. But I think this is something that is super cool to have in XPU. It'll save you a little bit of time. Um, and obviously you can combine this with your denoisers as well and really start to, to speed up your renders um, and, and get rid of that noise a little bit quicker. So anyways, hopefully this has helped you out. I have a bunch of other videos on my channel that I'm gonna be releasing 
for Houdini 20.5 and all the new stuff with it. So stay tuned for that. Like I said, if you want to look more at this uh, this setup and, and look at it on your own computer so it'll be a little bit easier to see some of these uh, different settings, then definitely download that. As I said, it'll be available on Patreon for free and uh, you can play around with it and, and test everything out yourself. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Check out the other videos on my channel if you're interested in learning more about Houdini 20.5 and have a good day.